Footy's back. That's right. I'm Bulldog legend Chris Grant. Wait, no, I'm not. I'm not strikingly handsome. I'm some ugly ginger dude named James Clements. G'day. I'm the host of the AFL Today Show. I'm joined, as per usual, by a couple of ding guy. One over there. It's the Stats Boy, Liam McCallion. What's going on, Stats Guy? Absolutely. Bit, bit rattled today. I don't know why. Absolutely yeah. what? I don't know why. Uh, but Chris <laughs> why Grant... Did he, why did he just say absolutely? Because he's rattled. I just, I'm just always absolutely uh, absolutely rattled. Chris Grant as well. Robbed of a brown though, that man. Uh, he should have won one. Got suspended uh, in the year. And then the guy... That hit him, said, oh, yeah, I didn't actually hit him, and then should have, should have won a brown, though. So absolutely filthy for Chris Grant. <laughs> good, good chat. <laughs> I'm here as well. Corey McKernan, ever, another brown, though, winner, but yeah. wasn't. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, and next to him is social guy, oh, Leo. finally getting the intro. No. <laughs> Feeling good, Jim. Uh, we've changed places, so maybe stats guy is just a, he's a bit off. Yeah, I feel that. like you. Yeah. Maybe that's why. Hmm. His angle is weird. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, this is the AFL Today Show. This is the Thursday Night Teams Show. Uh, teams, it's crucial. And I'll tell you what, we've got some big ones this week. The cool part is you can check out all of the AFL Today gear across all of the socials as well. YouTube. What is it? X. Facey. Facey. Instagram. Instagram. TikTok. TikTok is the big one. TikTok is the big uh, Get around all of them or Stats Guy will try to fight you. So, <laughs> footy is back. This is the round 11 full-blown preview show. And wow, howdy. I'll tell you what. <laughs> wow, howdy. Wow, howdy. <laughs> I'm just trying to beat BT at this point. Uh, we've got a little bit of news popping up before we get into the teams. Uh Mullets, Stats Boy. Yeah. ABC stats. did a research into <laughs> AFL Mullets. It was a bit higher than I thought. 19% of the league I have one. I thought that was low. Do you think that's that's yeah. a lot? I feel like everyone has a mullet. I feel like now. back in the day, that's even higher than in the, I don't know, 80s and when the mullet was absolutely prime. Uh, yeah, massive article and breakdown from ABC. It's like a, a four-page thing. It has graphics. It's amazing. And they've just gone into the mullet. So I absolutely loved it. And I think a few of our followers wouldn't mind that article as well. I want to read it yeah. in full properly. It's fun. Because it feels like one in five might be a little bit much. Like, it's I feel just like, under 19%, but yeah, exactly, right? but still one in five. Let's just all be real. I thought it was <laughs> be more. But nah. 19%, like when you think about a full-blown mullet, you think up. about like the specific haircuts, are we literally just breaking down into simply it's shorter on the sides and longer at the back a little bit? Yeah. Is that's that, right. I think that's so it's not a full-blown mullet. So that's you, literally the definition, so I think yeah. that might be right. Anyway, other little bits of news. Harley Reid, my favorite future Carlton Blue, <laughs> if you listen to yesterday's show, he's not homesick or else he's lying to Tim Watson. That's never happened before. Uh, but still, have you done drugs, Joe? No. <laughs> uh, but still, Tim Watson, he's just, I don't know, if there's like a media personality that just gets my goat for being like wildly, wildly uninteresting, but also a very excellent footballer, it's Tim Watson. Yep. But Harley here is like, oh, I've got this giant head. No, I'm not homesick. And you're like, all right, I'll take your word for there it. There we go. Even though last week you said, oh, yeah, it was a bit tough missing me out on my family. <laughs> and just, uh, had a bit of a cry. But that's cool. Come play for the Blues. Uh, <laughs> other little bits of news popping off. Damien Hardwick, he got upset about Victorian clubs and their stance on travel burdens for the other clubs outside of Victoria. It's a bit rich. It's a bit rich for a bloke who whinged about travelling to Marvel. Yeah, literally a couple, <laughs> couple of kilometres down the road he used to whinge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> to Marvel. He's like, no, these guys don't come. We have to travel so much more. It's like, yeah, you travelled five blocks. Shut up. Maybe get some fans in, well, he, in the Gold He's playing at Marvel this week, so maybe that just brought back memories of... I think he just gets angry every time. <laughs> Dimmer is just like, I hate Marvel. I just hate it. He's like, I will bet all the... I, I'm not subscribed to Disney+. Plus. I'm like, I will punch like hey, Tony Avengers. Stark in the head. I'm like, I hate Captain America. Don't even get me started on the Hulk. And you're like, Dimmer, what is going on, mate? He's like, oh, he's just losing it. You heard it here first. Uh, Dimmer laid out, I reckon, for that for that game just because yeah. he remembered it was at Marvel. He, <laughs> They're like, dude, you're on the plane. Turn this plane around. <laughs> Let the boys off. I'm going home. I'm going back to the Gold Coast in my, in my yacht. Uh, and the last little bit of news, Tazzy. They've got Brendan Gale on board essentially as their CEO, right? So awesome. the next movement is apparently Nathan Buckley as coach, question mark? I think there was someone said that he should go for it. I don't know if Tazzy are gunning for it, but when his name's out there, he might as well go for it. I think he's a great coach, Nathan Buckley. Personally. This just in. 
AFL Today Show host James Clements up for the gig of the Whoa. head coach of Tassie. Well, you, would you live in Tassie? I would definitely not live in Tassie. <laughs> yeah, <I was> say, <laughs> okay, James Sisley. Yeah, James Sisley. Over here. <laughs> yeah, James Sisley and I have two things in common: a hatred of Tassie and a first name. So there red we hair, go. Red hair, red hair as well. You're also ginger. Three gun, gun full that. backs. Also, we will punch on with an entire crowd full of Taswegians. <laughs> anyway, no, look, Nathan Buckley or James Clements as coach of uh, the Tasmanian Devils. Tasmania Devils, not. Yeah, it's not Tasmanian, is it? It's Tasmania. Tasmania. Uh, as a full-blown Devils member, Are you? I really wish Alex was here. Because oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not some sort of fake fan coward like he is. But uh, anyway, I will still coach you, Tassie, if you ask. And also throw a lot of money at me. <laughs> right, let's do some game previews, though. We are about to kick into the Bulldog-Sydney game at Marvel Stadium for Thursday night footy. Yeah. Uh, what I want to do actually with these uh, songs is come up with the uh, the Sunday Night Football NFL tunes and just like, like wait no, no day for Thursday night. Oh, I've never heard that one. Never. <laughs> and away we go. So I will actually I'm have excited. a battery of songs wow. for the uh, next week. For next week. Sorry, right? Leo, you're going to be on Katiki <laughs> doing stuff in buses. Um, <laughs> just hand stuff. It's going to be okay. Uh, but the point is going to be. Uh, I will have a song set up for each of those days. It's going to be awesome. Is the Trust production me. uh like standard going to be as big as the NFL? Basically, it'll be like me on a big <laughs> like, a music video be on the, uh, the art center. It'll be me dancing with Cripper. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> Can't we'll wait. Cripper in. Wait, what, what am I doing? So today? the the over under are actually for this game. So Sydney is still a favorite for tonight's game. Nine and a half points, but the over under has actually risen quite dramatically. 172 and a half. Like so I predicted that it should be a bit higher. It should have been higher and uh it is. So I think I'm still sitting fat with my Sydney pick by 7. Uh Stats boy, you were Sydney by eighteen. I think I said that yesterday as well. And Sydney Leo. by sixteen. All right, we're all we all think. I wouldn't be, be surprised tight. the dogs yeah, win this because they win these random games and they they do lift against Sydney. Yeah. But you got to tip are a Sydney bit at the weird moment. at Marvel as well. I feel uh, you don't know what you're going to get. They're not too know. bad. No, they've won the last two or three. There, they're, they're all right. They did beat Essen in there a couple of years ago, but they let Essen back in it late. I don't know. It's, they it's, also lost almost lost to North there last year. Right? Yeah, so, when we had the yeah. interchange issue, yeah, that was horrible. So I mean, it could be a weird, tricky one. We know the dogs do have like these random games where like mm-hmm. Jamar or Cody will just kick six. Yeah. at Marvel, and you're like, oh, that happened. Cool. Anyway, um, I think we're all still going Sydney. There should be a pretty interesting, weird Fun game. game yeah, right? Definitely. So, be fascinating to see how many people they get there for a Thursday for a Sydney Dogs game. I think it'll be a few. You got lots of South Melbourne Dogs. A bit of 2016 vibes as yeah, well. Yeah, I think it'll be a decent crowd. Right. Friday. Friday night footy. <laughs> <laughs> Can we just get KFC to sponsor this show? I just want to sit here and yeah. eat chicken. Speaking Let's of go. on the screen. There Party time. Frio are actually favourites against the Collingwood Magpies on Friday night football. What is going on it's here? It's going to be because four, of the outs, surely. Four and a half point no, favourites. It was already favourites before that. Out there up the stadium. Is this 8, 10 hour time? It is. That's shocking, yeah. Because of the, yeah, obviously the time difference, yeah. I understand how time difference yeah. works. But like there are, every, fri- every <laughs> night game in, in Perth is always 8, 10. All right. <laughs> it's fr- Friday though. Like just make it. They could make it a bit Just knock off early. I agree. I agree with that. Uh, the over-under though is a very, very, very low 153.5. Now you might think that's strange and then you think about the offensive output of both of these teams, mm. you're like, that actually makes a little bit of sense. Uh, in terms of the ins and outs, there are a lot of ins. Whoa, yeah. For this pie. Just team. as many outs. Let's start with Wally Up. Uh, Sean Darcy and Corey Wagner. Hello. He used to play for North, actually. He was and horrible Melbourne? for us. And, and Melbourne, yeah. I think Melbourne. And he didn't. He had two years off, and then he came back in for free, and like, oh, you're actually all right. Nice. And he's, he's, a, he's a good player. Patty Boss and Michael Friedrich come come Friedrich. out of the out of the uh, Jim reading uh, Friedrich. The players' names is my, guy, is my favorite time of, of the week. I'm basically <laughs> every time I now pronounce a name, you have to figure out whether or not I'm taking the piss or actually trying to read it properly. Um, <laughs> no uh, one was reading it properly. Right? <laughs> yeah, I agree. Collingwood, income Charlie Dean. Yeah, sure. Bo McCreary, fellow Ginge, Brody Majek. <laughs> I don't know, fellow great. Kick, goal kicker. <laughs> Edward Allen and Will Parker. Out go Finn McRae, Will Oscar Elliott, Jordan DeGoey, Ooh. Rafe McGuinness, and Oleg Markov. Personal reasons. Um, is it to trim his mustache? I don't know. Yeah, but curl way, it a bit more, are. maybe. Yeah. Uh, but Will Parker, Ed Allen, in they come. So a couple of de- debutants. Which mm-hmm. kind of Will like Parker's uh, the ex cricketer. Yes, he yeah, played, played for Hobart. For Hobart. Hobart. Right. Did he yeah. play for Beasley, yeah. Victoria at all? Uh, I think or he was Tazzy, on, their, on their like squad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's so cool. you can see why Frio might be. Favourites here because it is a pretty interestingly – like you, you can't really say Collingwood are inexperienced ever. 
No. Because like they have 700 million games yeah. played. They've got Scott Penderbury. Steel side bottom and Scott Penderbury <laughs> yeah. combined, right? So in a way you go. But you look at that and you're like, yeah, they've named Nick Dacos in the half forward spot. Maya check, Harvey Harrison, Edward Allen. Like it's a pretty thin on the ground pies team. Line. So yeah, yeah. be interesting to see what happens here. Have we got some stats here, stats boy? Yeah, Collingwood have won seven of their last eight interstate games, won by 26 in the last meeting at Optus. I think that over-under is 153 and a half as well because Freer bring the clamps. They're, if you're talking about clamps, any Ross side, Lions side in the past, obviously, used to coach them. They still bring the clamps. Second best defense in the league, which is really, really surprising. You've got a lot of guys that run off, but even Luke Ryan's been okay, lockdown. Uh, been Hayden, okay, he's been awesome. Yeah, but I'm saying lockdown. Usually just runs off and gets the ball, but he's been great at taking marks, Hayden Young. So yeah, second best defense in the league. Last six night meetings between these sides have gone under. So even if you, you're thinking about the 153 and a half. So low though. It's really low, but Collingwood don't have any forwards right now. Frio are just not known for their big forwards. I'm, I'm going the under in that one as well. I'll pay that. Mm. Uh, I'd probably go the under here too, just because just. I think it. we've actually already seen this a couple of times already this year, right? Where it's like, some weird, gross, like seventy to sixty sort of game. I reckon it's seventies. Like yeah, one of these, yeah. one, it's either the Thursday or the Friday night. It's like all the Saturday actually. It wasn't last <laughs> Saturday, week. Sunday. Last week it wasn't because we had like the, some massive nighttime game scores. But there's always one that sort of skims through, and you're like, ugh. Yeah. And I think last week it was actually Freo Saints, wasn't it? it was well, like, uh, Freo uh, Port the other week that yeah. was horrible. That game. Pretty tough one. So I think, look, the big question for this one is: Are Freo a finals team? And this is one of those games where it'll probably dictate a lot of their season, right? Where mm. The Pies are on the up and up and up and up after a pretty slow start. Frio have no, been look. just – they've had some absolute Barry Crocker shocker losses, right? And you feel like a couple of kicks of the ball either way, who knows where they'd be. But at the moment, they are ninth. Ninth. I'm looking at the ladder, yeah. And you're like, they're one of the myriad of six and four teams, along with my beloved Blues. The question is, like, if they win this, they're – Putting, putting themselves in a pretty good position to actually play finals. So what do you reckon? Are they a finals team? I think so. Uh, they, yeah. I think oh, because of the actually, second wait. best defense in the league, yeah. that puts them in that category. They do have problems on offense, of course, but if you're that good at defending the, your opposition, I think you're, you're a chance. That's how, that's how uh, yeah, Saints pretty much made it last yeah, year absolutely. with defense. Uh, I'm going to say nah. I think the top seven – I think are in finals. I know it's very early to say, but That's I, very early I, say. I think all of those teams are finals worthy. And then it's out of Gold Coast and Carlton. And I think Gold Coast and Carlton are ahead of Freer. So yeah, I'd say I'd say Carlton and then Gold Coast and Freer just miss out. It's probably a topic for a different time, probably for our midweek show. Midweek show, week. yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's trying to figure out your mid, yeah. mid-season eight. But at the same yeah. time, like I still think there's big questions around Port, yeah. GWS, yeah. Melbourne after they lost to West Coast. Yeah. Uh, even a marble over Carlton, et cetera. Not so much talent those teams. Uh, I'm still tipping the Pies by seven in this one and a really, really close slog. Leo, mm-hmm. what are you doing? Pies by eight. So Ooh, close nice. to your gym. But, oh. yeah. Closest to the pin. Uh, <laughs> Stats boy. I'm going Frio. Their midfield's awesome. As I mentioned, their back line's awesome. They've got – Collingwood have no forwards that are going to kick enough goals here. And then you've got the clamps. I they could my check. Yeah, but he hasn't been you know, great. Well, he has been pretty horrible this year. So I'm going to go uh, Freo, what did I do? By eight. I think they're going to win by eight. I think they're going to bring the clamps, def- just defensively lock them down, and then Sarong's going to have an absolute blinder. It is tough like when you look at that sort of lineup that they've got. They're playing like they've listed Lipinski at full forward. You're like, <laughs> really? <laughs> sure. Anyway, well. uh, there you go. That's Friday night footy. Friday night footy. Uh, Saturday, we go down to Tassie, to Blunston Arena. Where you blunt stones? Uh, One forty-five in the afternoon. North Melbourne are hosting uh, the Port Adelaide Power. The Power are forty-four and a half point favourite. Stats boy. Yeah. Against your beloved Ruse. The over/under is one seventy-five and a half. In terms of over/unders, I'd be fascinated to know what it's like in Adelaide because it feels like some of those are just like absolute. Ugh, what is going on here, games? Mm. And others. 13! Like, just, it goes off, goes right? Up. Yeah, so, you're right, yeah. I know, it's a tricky one. 175 and a half. It feels like the power could... Because they've got a decent offense. Have a crack. Yeah. They were pretty meh last week, though, right? The power, weren't they? Yes. They just yeah. they should have been kicking much bigger scores. They've just kicked so many behinds. It's like, if, if I was a power fan, I'd be so frustrated with how inaccurate they've well, kicked Well, a lot of the weeks. behinds last yeah. week was... Not last week, but, yeah. Hawthorne and Pressure. how they played. Yeah, but yeah. in the 
Before that, I think they've yeah, a lot of they've got some big in sweet and rosy back, so not uh, not. Let's happy do the ins and outs then. Yes, Jackson should. Archer comes back in for the ruse. I'm happy with that. He went out injured the other week. In, yeah. place, of Ber- uh, in place of Bergman, and yep. uh, in for Yalta Pulte, we have Jordan Sweet, Connor Rose, C Rosie. That's a big in. The most handsome man in the <laughs> AFL. Is his hammy all right? Lockie Jones, as well, which is kind of nice. Charlie Dixon is managed. I like Ooh. that they've gone, yeah, don't come to Tassie. Charlie's, oh, I'm not going to Tassie. Yeah, he's the James Sicily uh, no theory. Uh, don't that visit any. He's out too. <laughs> and so Josh Sin uh, got injured too, which is the Josh Sin one was tough. This is, can we rank all of Jason Horn Francis' yeah. 50th game? Against like, North. Oh, I'm going to boo very loudly through my <laughs> screen. I Do cannot wait. you down there I in Tassie? I hate that guy. <laughs> They'll hear me, yeah. This is the Hornet. <laughs> Cup, which is awesome. Is that is the Hornet Cup the one from like Cars? The Pixar no, Piston Cup. Piston, Piston Cup. Cup. Big Cars. It was one of the. I think one of the Cars <laughs> maybe the Hornets. Or yeah, something. yeah, chick hicks. Uh, but the Hornet fifty <laughs> games. Rank them all. Stats guy, quick go. Uh, no, nah, he's, he's, he's taken ice ice bath and then. We'll, then he's we'll once for North yeah. at the end. Last yeah. two weeks, very good. He only had like one game good. Well, a good game for us once. I <laughs> one can't game even talk. Good. One, one game good. One game good. <laughs> me speak, I talk good. Me speak English good. That's impossible. Good job. But Hornet, like he's. It's fascinating to watch these this power team, right? Like week in, week out. So Rosie goes out, but Hornet steps up massively. Houston gets a million touches. Mm. And Butters just goes to like a completely different level of just like, hey, watch me ruin this game. 17 in touches in he one quarter. He didn't have an opponent in the last quarter. It was crazy. But still, now Ray, really Rosie comes back in, does that boost them up? Does it make it even better? You'd assume that. Uh, sweet in place of Vizantini, you'd think that's a little bit better too. This team is very strange though. Like I just, it's really I hard to trust out of the power. tips. Yep. Because I'm taking the North Melbourne Kangaroos by one point. Uh, Galaxy brain. <laughs> my big question is, if it happens in Tassie, would a North win still count? Yes. I'm, if we win, I'm heading down there for the, for the week, I reckon. This is a party with the locals. I'm surprised uh, <laughs> and angry that you're not actually going down anyway. This yeah, is a home a game. Forced, that's guy. I thought uh, well, My fan. team is 0-10. I used to go every year, and, and I'm used not going to. there when we're going to get smashed by 100 points. Jeez, just or, imagine if you had a good coach. Oh. Actually, not 100 points, but yeah. <laughs> no, I'm on, the, I'm on board with you finally. Thank Took you. me 0-9, I think, <laughs> to uh, agree that our coach is, yeah, he's cooked. So if you actually extrapolate what I've said there, it's North Adelaide by... <laughs> <laughs> Surely North you're not Adelaide by, us. No, I don't, I don't think North win this one. I'm actually oh, going to go changing. power. So Coward. <laughs> All right, let's do it. <laughs> He's gone. Leo's pretty much gone the chicken, chicken. And then, and then Nobody the, calls me chicken. 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 <laughs> Just taking the bait. So I had a plan to change that north by one. But no. it is a, what do I, I – look, I hate people who always say, what do I always say? But what do I always say? Weird stuff happens in Tassie. It's Tassie. Weird stuff just happens uh, there. Not for so, a while. I think the point here, I reckon North could pull out an absolute shocker and win this. So let's go. <laughs> I hope you're right, Jim. But yeah, I'm going powered by 35. They just yeah, without Dixon, I don't think they're going to blow this one away. Similar to uh, the Essendon game last week, the North were hanging around for two or three quarters. Last quarter, we just lose it. We literally rank 17th and 18th offensive defense. Can I at least change so, my pick know. to then at least be power like North <laughs> Jim, cover? You can change your pick. North <laughs> cover. No one's got a knife to you. Oh, maybe they do. Well, I don't know. But. Stat, stats boys just like got a gun on me there. Uh, North, I think should cover this. 44 and a half is like. That's very different to winning 44 and a half. <laughs> it's awesome. the little wins. It's the little wins. Yeah, yeah, 44 and a half is a lot because yeah, I think, I think we strange stuff that, happens. Yeah. And like what we've seen power do time and time again is like just throw out these shocking games. You're like, what is that? Ugh. It's just, I think and then they have some yeah. random awesome games. You just don't know what's going to happen week on week. The line's that big because we've literally played them the last two times in Tassie, it lost by nice. 60 plus yeah. both times. So I don't know why they actually say, ah, that was a great game. Both times. Let's go down there. Again. Horn Francis from the riot from the, the, from the, riot of, uh, the North Melbourne. I would run on the ground, yeah. Who are you taking, Leo? Port by 32. I think North cover. I wasn't impressed by Port before uh, Hawthorne choked last week. Yep. Yeah, fraud oh. watch. The watch. fact that Hawthorne did not win that game is hilarious. So Don't talk to me, Jim. Port, <laughs> Port are definitely on fraud watch, and this might be where they actually They're get. not on fraud watch. They are fraud. They are fraud. Okay, but are they're fraud. on fraud watch because they're eight and two. No, six and – no, seven and three. Something I'm just going like to start saying words. <laughs> seven and three. Seven and <laughs> three and seven? <laughs> what adds up to ten? <laughs> Away we go. Ten and huh? But they are on fraud watch. They're seven and three. They're like third on the ladder. Like there's yep. – like at least two of those they wins that they've had, you're like, them, yeah. what are you talking about? The Geelong game, they nearly lost. The Hawthorne game, they definitely should have lost. They yeah. always lose to They Adelaide. lose to Showdown. <laughs> they like, not only should have lost to Hawthorne, they should have got smashed. Yeah. Hawthorne had that. Blew it. Anyway. <laughs> Leah doesn't want to talk about that anymore. Go, Go Ruse. <laughs> Prove me wrong. Go Ruse. Thank you. Carlton. 
My beloved Blues are 16 and a half point favorites against Gold Coast Suns this weekend at Marvel Stadium. 135. This is a very, very strange. Is that 135? Must be 145. 145. I think it's 145. No, it's 145. It's the same time. Weirdly, they're both at the same time. I just had a look. That's That's not annoying at all. The over under for this one is 175 and a half, which probably comes off the back of Gold Coast just belting Geelong. Yeah, the Darwin Suns. Yeah, yeah. Uh, love the Darwin Sun. So I'd probably look at the over for this because Carlton GWS played a game that I expect will be very similar to this one what, about a month ago. Mm-hmm. And that just sort of ticked over when Carlton got to like the 114 mark. And, yeah. Carlton uh, Adelaide. GWS sort of as well. kept yeah. sneaking up as well. And they only won by 14. So Carlton Adelaide was the exact Way over, yeah. 100 to 98. So mm-hmm. uh, I think this will go over. The Blues – have these weird games against Gold Coast. They won. This was their turning point last year. So the big question for this one is, is this where the Blues turnaround happens? Is can they? We talked about yeah. how they've got a really, really, really tough six weeks in the middle of the season. Then the schedule opens up a little bit in the back half, right? So they won the Melbourne game. They get absolutely smashed, as I predicted, by Sydney last week. We all knew that was going to happen. This is the crucial sort of game in this run where if they can win this, they can at least go 500 for that little run. And it keeps your season on track to a degree of making finals. And that's all that matters, right? Yep. Making the finals. So is this where it happens? Or exactly. is this the proving ground for the Suns? Where it's like, we are le- the like hands up, we are legit. Look <laughs> at us. We're a proper t- I'm a real boy kind <laughs> yeah, of vibe, no, right? Away they go, like Dimmer is like Geppetto. He's like, oh, <laughs> I'm gonna make you my son. <laughs> the son. What is your Dimmer was that? And Italian. away we go. Dimmer Hardwick, definitely Italian. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Dimitina. <laughs> the point being, uh, <laughs> I worry a lot about the Carlton midfield. Yeah. Like defensively, I've talked about their shortcomings time and time They've said they since round one, pretty And much, they yeah. get shredded defensively in the midfield. Yeah. And Gold Coast Suns have a midfield that will just absolutely burn you apart, which is what they did last week to Geelong. I could easily see that happening again. I think Carlton do just enough to like fall over the line in this one, but I don't know. It's Marvel. It's weird. Gold Coast and Marvel stats, boy. Give us some stats. Uh, yeah, Gold Coast and Marvel, not great. Four and seven the last five years. I think a few of those wins were against North and they, they actually smashed us there. Uh, home team covered has covered the line in 16 of the last 18 Gold Coast games, mainly because Gold Coast has lost their last 10 yeah. away games. Ooh. So they're always favorite at home and they're always underdogs away. Check That's just out. what always happens the last couple of years with Gold Coast. They just struggle away from home. Yeah. Yeah, so no good at all. No so good. in terms of the back line for the Suns, like that might be where... We saw it in the game that Carlton won up there last year. There was the famous yeah. Charlie Kerno goes back, takes a mark on the goal line. Basically. That's right, yeah, yeah. Saves the game, and then we smashed him at the G in like June. All uh, Australians and a half back, Charlie Kerno. And that was like where it all, so <laughs> that's where it all sort of <laughs> turned around for Carlton last year. Uh, I think Blues win this by less than a goal. Should we talk points. about some ins and outs? If just, oh, yeah, the ins and outs. Thank you, Sad. Sad as well. As well. That's He's right, because in, yeah. a lot of this, my, I literally wrote down my pick after I saw the ins and outs of this. So we've yep. got Adam Sard, Lucky Cow, and Moo. You got a moo and a woof. Come and back in. Fogarty. That's, that's good. good. You got a moo and a woof. Yeah. I love it. Like, it's interactive <laughs> footy. Exactly. This, this is this great. It's all about the vibes. Loving it. <laughs> Corey Durden goes out. Pitternet. Pitterno broke his finger like two weeks ago, and then they sort of went, "Oh yeah, now you're also really cooked." So he's gone. Marchbank managed as well, which is one of those ones where they brought him back for a little bit. Mm. They now have Sad available. Off he goes. That feels fair. Um, which means TDK, Tom DeConing, by himself in the ruck. I want to see it. You want to Let's see go. Anyway, it's up yeah. against Witsy. Uh, for the Suns, in comes my beloved Jed Walter. What do I do with this game? <laughs> what do I do? Are you going to wear a split top? Can I, yeah, I'll be like one of the Kelsey. I'll be Ke- like yeah, Travis Kelsey. Kelsey's mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where she wears <laughs> Donna. Me Call me Donna Jim Clements. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. I'll you look like Donna. There we go. Just split Jed split, Walter top. Yeah. And Charlie Kerner on the other. Well, I wear a Cade Simpson jersey. My beloved Cade Number Simpson. Number six. Number six. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in comes Jed Walter, though, the greatest player in the AFL. Witsy, <laughs> Nick Holman, interesting in, and Jake Rogers as well. Jake Out goes Fiorini, uh, Ned Moyle, Alex Davies, and Sam Day. Tough one for Sam Day. He's like, oh, I was awesome. He last actually week. played all right, yeah. So a tough one, but I'm still going the Blues by four. Yep. Um, because I think with Saad sort of helping that back line with McGovern and Saad and Brody Camp and Weeders, they should be just solid enough, I think, in the back half that. Even if it's tight, they fall over the line and just give me another heart attack because that's great fun. Uh, stats, boy? <laughs> uh, I'll go Carlton by 13. Like you said, I think, yeah, the defense 
not even uh, the lockdown defense, but just Saad running off, giving that run, that just accurate kick. All the other defenders you have are very sort of locked down and, and like to stay on their man a lot, whereas Saad will provide a bit of run. And I think that's a huge in. And yeah, the back line of the Suns is going all right, but I think, yeah, your forwards are going to have a bit of a field there in this one. So 13, I'm going to save the Blues. Yeah, because I mean, a lot of it is like they, like Mac Andrew up against either Harry Mackay or he's going really Charlie. Well, he's playing awesome at the mm. moment. I thought he got injured last game. But he yeah, he, he was like, off injured for a bit. He was looping yeah. around. Like it looked like maybe it was a corky or whatever. Maybe because like they were winning by like off, 60. They were like, oh, you can just stay resting, off yeah. probably, yeah. Uh, but like stupid sexy Flanders and stuff as well. Like that's <laughs> He's a, awesome. That man. punch off the halfback. Like it's going to be pretty interesting. But Leo, what do you think? Blues by under a goal. Ooh, I just as think, usual. <laughs> yeah, as usual. But Suns <laughs> yeah. just don't win away. No. Like, and it's completely different. Like you're going from hot Darwin to Marvel. I really under wish Carlton were playing this game at the MCG because that's where we smashed them last year. Actually, they, yeah, they're really bad at the MCG. They hardly ever play. Shocking. You'll smash them here. Don't worry. Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go down to Geelong for the GMHBA clash against the GWS Giants. The Cats coming off a smashing of their own up in the Northern Territory. They are 10 and a half point favorites against the Giants. Which seems weird. The over-under is 181.5. That seems a lot. That's a lot. Mm. The Giants have really struggled to score the last few weeks. It's been absolutely like horror show vibes. The thing is, hey, stats guy. Hello. What's GWS's record <laughs> at GMHBA? They've at surprisingly, the they've won the last three games of GMHBA. It's the fortress. In my lifetime, you, you go to Geelong, you go, we're already going to lose. How much are we going to lose by? Could it be 200? Could it be 100? You always lose there. Giants have cracked the code. They've won the last three at GMHBA. Crazy. Mm. Could they do it again? No. But that's the problem. As I said, that <laughs> struggling GWS offense, they have kicked 69, 62, and 43. That's ugh. It's not great. The 43 was horrible. They just it couldn't was, get anything going against the It dogs. was a slog last week. Um, yeah. I don't know. You got any vibes on this one here, Leo? There's some pretty good ins for Geelong. Oh, Let's do very it. good ins. It is a Actually, slew. We haven't about that, yeah. Yeah. The big question is, like, are the Cats frauds? Let's do the ins and outs. We'll find out because I think this actually sort of is the tipping point. Yeah. Because they bring back Tomahawk. Not bad. Tom Hawkins. Mitch Duncan can play a bit. Sam DeConing. He's good, yeah. Might be the better of the DeConings. We don't know yet. Well, not not this year. Maybe. I don't think so. And Jezza. He's sick and tired of fighting his cows and he's come back in. Off <laughs> yeah. Out goes Parfit Rowan. Cam Guthrie, which is a tough one. Mark O'Connor as well. For the Giants, Lee Kalir, Toby McMullen, Ryan Angwin. And James Peters. Just yeah, compare those ins. None of those. Not quite I like, that's, I like, that's the story for me. I like Aaliyah, right and then now. the rest are just very plain. Yeah, but you're comparing Leek Aaliyah to Sam DeConing. It's tough. Like, Aaliyah's going to be a good player, Sam but DeConing is, is a way better going player Going under the radar Aaliyah. is having a very average season this year. So you, do you want to look down the camera and say Lee Kalir is a better footballer than Sam DeConing? Uh, no, I don't. Yeah, because well, I'm saying, idiot, I'm so saying sure. right now that is good in for GWS. It is, it's but a fine one, but it's not It's not comparable to Jack Buckley, Jacob Weir, Connor Stone, and Darcy Jones all out as well. It's a hard one, I think, for the Giants. I think this is a fun midfield matchup, at least, right? Yeah, yeah. But I just oh, don't know sort of. The, Giants midfield is a lot. Better Giants than, has just copped a lot of hits over the last. Cats few have weeks, been so. competitive in there. Like we thought they weren't going to be, but they have. That's where they've been losing. Like that's but, where they lost the game against the Sun. They could okay, not but like, clearance. who is competitive against Gold against Gold Coast? Yeah, when no, they're at home. Like North got smashed, Hawks got smashed. Like it's hard to play them up there. Yeah, I, I know. Yeah. yeah. So. I think this would be an interesting one. I think GWS, this forward line could actually fire up a little bit. They have to at some point because the start big, of the season are amazing. Big be green game maybe. I think Geelong still win this by five, but I think it's an absolute thriller Ooh. down there Saturday afternoon at GWS. Uh, GMHB. At GWS. GWS. <laughs> Lots of Gs. NG. Uh, NG. Uh, Leo, who do you think wins this? Cats by 17. To answer your question, I don't think the Cats are frauds. Oh, I, yeah, that was the big question. You, did, no, you said that before, yeah. I think – the forward line of Geelong is still one of the best in the competition and yep. their back line, although it may not be in the best of form, it's still pretty good structurally. Yeah, yeah. You've got so Tom you've got Stewart, Sam DeConey. Stewart just needs to snap out of it. He, he hasn't played he well. He's doing turnover. It's like he's still half concussed, which is very sad. But I hope he's all right. <laughs> for mainly for my super coach team, but yeah, and he's and he's and he's well. It is sad uh, if he's you, still concussed. You he's not still concussed. Going along by twenty. Uh, if you said at the start of the season, maybe four rounds in, when GWS was absolutely flying, you'd probably tip GWS with yep. their form at you know, GMHBA. But they've been horrible, so uh, Cats will kick too big of a score. Well, Geelong are now seven and three. Mm. They had won seven straight, right? Yeah. So, GWS had been flying. They're six and four and have lost, what, three of the last Cats, four? So. Cats lost two of them by a goal, right? Yeah, so. And then got crushed last week. So, yeah. tricky one. There's going to be a great game. Yep. Another great game. One of the greatest on the AFL calendar. Dream time of the G. We've got Richmond versus Essendon. 42 and a half point favorites in the Bombers. Oh, geez. 
Usually this, yeah. Well, that'd be a lot really more, to be honest. Ugh. I think because it's dream time, they're just like, Rich oh, they might lift no, it. They put up a fight. Won't. Yeah. No, mm. they won't. Yeah. Hey, kid, want to see a dead body? <laughs> uh, Over-under is 165 and a half. Essen and could almost do that by themselves. They could. Well, Brisbane put up, what was it, 163? Yeah. yeah. So I don't think Essendon could score. I actually had old mate. She was like, oh, did you see the football? I'm like, yes, that's all right. Oh, just uh, in general? The over-under, <laughs> basically Brisbane did it by themselves. Yeah, the over yeah, yeah. It was a tricky one. So- Pull it out for the Tigers. The ins and outs for this one, yeah, the dream time. Liam Baker, happy days, yep. I guess. Samson Ryan, uh, Seth Campbell, out go Tyler Young, Reese Mansell, and uh, Matty Coulthard. <laughs> Reese Mansell. Ryan, Ryan Mansell, what am I saying? <laughs> I'm reading very was quickly. That, was that, that, that was on purpose, purpose that one. That was, he, he, thinks he, he looks like a Reese. He looks like a Reese, that I feel guy. Like there's another Reese Mansell that I've seen somewhere else. But anyway, in Reece, for what's Essendon. That, what's that singer? Reese uh, Maston. Is that who you're thinking of? Remember that guy from like got Australia's Got Talent? Like X Factor. Like, no, yeah, no, yeah, 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 yeah. No, let him cook. I don't know any of his songs. I just remember. Is that who you're talking about? Let him cook. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like this man in the kitchen. He's a big Reese Maston. For the Bombers, <laughs> Nate Caddy makes his debut. That's kind of fun. Nick yep. Cox and Jordan Ridley, big one in as well. Huge in. You've got Elijah Sartis. Sartis, Sartis yeah. Uh, Dylan, <laughs> Bang. Dylan Shield. Uh, is it Shile? Yeah. Uh, Harrison Jones. <laughs> no, Hazard, it's John I miss, Jones. I miss, <laughs> no, I miss Har- Hazard Jones going out. <laughs> Espana. Uh, this is – the big question is, like, how much did Essendon win by? Yeah, they're going to smash him. The other question is, could the Bombers still win if Michael Long was just played in that game? <laughs> yeah, they're doing the long walk to the G. I reckon G. that'd be fine. He Do just, the long walk. Long walk to the G. Just, just walk, walk on the ground, walking. mate. He's doing the long walk. Ground. Give him a sharam at, a sharam at some yeah. stage and he'll kick a guy. I reckon he kick three on the Tigers at the moment. Jeez. <laughs> that'd be pretty cool. Uh, give us some stats, stats boy. Well, we've got some all-time dream time stats. That, that doesn't roll off the tongue very nicely. Uh, Richmond, 12 and... <laughs> all-time dream time? I feel like... A, I think you no, might have a No, I don't like that. I like that. There's something about it. Richmond ahead of the... Is this why you're 10 on the scoreboard as well as in your Tinder profile. Yeah, 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 yeah. You've got a lot of time. I told, I told uh, the government to stop giving Jim access to my phone. It's a bit creepy. But <laughs> the government. Anyway, yeah, something. I don't know. <laughs> the FBI. <laughs> anyway, Richmond lead the head to heads 12 to 7 against Essendon in Dreamtime. But this one's a different story. Essendon won by one point last oh, year. That was Do you remember game. that? Yeah. Durham awesome. match winner. Did he mark it in the, in the square? Yeah, yeah. yeah and that was square, unbelievable. Yeah. That, awesome. that last play of the whole game, Durham kicked the match winner. So that was awesome. Uh, Essendon won the last 11 matches as favourite. So they're up and about again. They're going to be heavy favourites. Up and about. Uh, Richmond decimated with injuries, failed to cover the line in their last five. Nice one. I wanted to go bigger on this one. Essendon by 48. I thought it could be substantially larger. It could be, yeah. It's just, I don't know. I don't know if Dreamtime games will just be massive, massive, massive blowouts. People, like, like these sort of big games, like Sam's hands like that, people do lift, You'd I easily guess. just turn it into a grind. But so. Richmond have had so many injuries. They are so bad. Uh, there is like <laughs> new, good news on the horizon for them getting some of their dudes back. It's just not this week. Uh, it's going to be after point. round 21 when they're like? Uh, I'm going Essendon by 60. I think, yeah, that line is a little bit too small. Essendon just have been a, a really good team. Obviously, you, Jim said you're, they're the best team in the world. <laughs> Prove <laughs> me wrong, Bombers. <laughs> Prove well, me wrong. Champions. Best team in the AFL, well, th- the Essendon Bombers. I think <laughs> if they don't cover that line, it's a disappointment. <laughs> like They'll be like, ooh, we didn't play that well. I think you got to cover that. 40-ish mark. Otherwise, they're like, that's, that's, why, that's like a that's loss. That's why I said 48. Yeah. Like, you need to win it by Otherwise like they won't more than 43. It's just like, yeah. ugh. That's basically, like, if Richmond cover, that's a win. Yeah, like, I, I agree. You should, like, put 1.5 on the ladder. <laughs> yeah. Leo? Essendon by 85. Like this will be like an absolute aggressive. smashing. Uh, it's also Stringer's 200th game, so this Ooh. could be a big game for his contract, I'm just saying. Contract year Stringer. Is this, what about contract it? year Jake Stringer. Milestone is game. One of the, is Over one under of the best. on Jakey Stringer barrels in this game, two and a half. Ooh. Under. Oh. He's playing for a contract. Let's go. Let's go three. Jake, yeah. Come on. <laughs> Let's go three, man. Six. Let's go nine. ten. <laughs> Every uh, time he gets the ball, he barrels it. <laughs> We're all taking Essendon to cover that one, so. Yep. Sunday, your beloved Hawks, Leo, take on the Brisbane Lions, who, hmm, this is an interesting one. Bit of success against them lately. Yeah. 16 and a half point favourites of Brisbane Lions coming down to Marvel, where they're actually not that bad either. So the over-under is 165 and a half. This is a tricky one. How do we feel about this, Leo, quick? Um, I feel sad from last week still. Yeah, I can imagine. Just yeah. forget about it. Yeah, i got to forget about it. <laughs> I... I don't mind it to be honest. Like we have a great record against Brisbane. We've won the last four meetings. That's crazy. We haven't lost at Marvel this year. And last time we choked a lead last year and lost the game, we came out and knocked off the pies. Nice. So there's some good vibes going around. If, yeah, Hawks, Hawks fans will be up and about for this game. They'll yes. be excited. Yeah. Feels like a really dashed. big Josh Dunkley game. 
It's it like, does. Every time it yeah. comes back to Marvel, it's like, yeah, I like this place. We used to play that every week. Yeah. Uh, the big question here is if Brisbane gets smashed by Hawthorne, would you consider just go, all right, Fags, on your way? No, uh, no. And then North will pick him up. They'd be 4-6-1 so and one if they lose this game. They are cooked in terms of playing finals at that I'm point. I'm not the coach. I, I disagree with that, actually. I'm going to get into that with my big call. Ooh, interesting. Oh. I'm going to take, or like, can the Lions get with the Marvel Magic? That's the sort of yeah, question. Yeah, 7-1 there in their last eight, Brisbane. So they, they we always talk, used to talk about, even at the start of the year, how they're horrible at the G. So you go, oh, they don't travel that well, but they travel well. They just pretend, close their eyes. Oh, we're at the Gabba when they're seven and honest, one at Marvel. There's not that much difference between Marvel and the Gabba. What about the like? ground dimensions? Just yeah. imagine, if, just imagine if they open the roof. Oh, anyway. how do they compare to the SCG dimensions? I though? think we need to get somebody on this. <laughs> um, Are we cut now to Alex. He's live from Marvel. He's, he's busy punching a hole in a wall uh, and chewing through some concrete. Uh, I'm tipping Hawthorne. Oh, no. I love this track record. I thought they were awesome last week, and I think Sam Mitchell is as important in the right direction. Yep. I think Lions on the road. I can't try – like Joey Duckett's, Joey Danaher, doesn't mind a snag or two down at Marvel, which is kind of good. Yeah, too. I reckon he could have a big but day. The ins and outs for this game, which we need to get to. Yes. You have Sicily. 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 <laughs> Don't send him to Tassie. It's Sicily. Uh, Josh Ward, Scrimshaw, Jack Gunson, and Finn McGuinness all in with an extended bench. Yep. The Wizard goes out. Nick Watson and Jai Sarong. Sarong. Uh, Omitted. Also oh, dropped. Yeah. So oh, wait, I'm thinking of Dora. You're okay. thinking of Caleb Sarong? No, I'm thinking of someone else. Dora. Good, good job. <laughs> well explained, Stats Boy. Oh, uh, the Lions, Brandon <laughs> Ryan, Henry Smith, James Tunstall, Zach Bailey, which is pretty big. It's huge. Gary Joyce as well. Shadow Brain, the world's oh. greatest oh, name. He's dropped. He's dropped. Oh. Uh, the tough one as well as Eric Kippel. Right, Bruce is still in, isn't he? Yeah, good old Bruce Reville. He was really good last week. He got 75 in my, in my super coach. Love so it. I love that the Lions have like the best name in the AFL and the best hair. Which is very cool. So I'm on board with it. But Hipwood, lo like losing Hipwood, I'm fascinated to see how this works out because then you just go, we've got Chucky and we've got Joey Duckets. That's still those, a good forward for line, those yeah. playing along at home. That's Charlie Cameron and Joe Danaher. Yep. <laughs> a couple of mustaches just hammering on tongs. I like this. <laughs> Be interested to see if that actually opens it up for them. Yeah. Yep. And it really could, especially against this sort of pretty, to be honest, undermanned Hawthorne back line. Yeah. So. They could just rip this off, but they do have CJ back. They now get Sicily back. I kind of trust the Hawks just to sort of yeah. like get into the get into the dirt to have a crack. So let's go Hawks. I'm going Hawks as well. Oh, this is the you? first time I've tipped Hawthorne in years, wow. so that means I'll lose. Um, if if I'm changing them. my pick. Just <laughs> yeah. The thing up. with Brisbane though is, and this is one thing I'm going to be, well, I'm not going to be able to watch it, but curious to see how it plays out is. Why won't you be able to watch it, Leo? Are you going to be on a plane or something? Uh, potentially, Jim. Yeah. yeah, potentially. Flying the plane. Fake fan. <laughs> <laughs> um, Charlie Cameron versus Blake Hardwick. So Hardwick obviously kicked five goals for Hawthorne in three quarters and then they moved him back. With Hardwick playing forward, who goes to Charlie Cameron? It's That's tricky. What I was literally about we to need, say that. We yeah. need two Blake Hardwicks. Like, we, we need to play him back. <laughs> Just clone him. Well, they did Charlie it last Cameron. week. They played him back and forward. Yeah, but like he should have stayed forward because he would have <laughs> exactly. been the game. That's nice his time. You, go, you kick five, you let Chucky kick five, and then he'll go back and stop. <laughs> it's it. equalization. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm not. I'm a math I, magician. <laughs> I do. I'm excited for the Hawks. They won the last four, but. I'm going. I'm going. Won the last four against oh, against hey, Brisbane. Yeah, say, where was yeah, I? We talked about. <laughs> you have so definitely not won the last four in Lions this year. Lions for stats boy. Yeah, Lions by nineteen. Yep. It is a really interesting. Like it's a strangely interesting game for you. It is first game on the Sunday, right? Like one ten Marvel Sunday game. Wake like, up. Mm, what's the game? You're just like, hang on, wake up. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> God, stats guys just getting home. <laughs> I'm, that joking, time. I'm joking. <laughs> stats boys like Rams. Woo. <laughs> the over under one sixty five and a half is a fascinating one as well for that yeah. game because you feel like Brisbane could put up a pretty handy score. I'd probably go the over there just because I think Hawthorne could probably kick enough Hawthorne of a score. Been around on offense. Lions yeah. can stick stick with them, obviously. Uh, and then we go to the later game in Melbourne that afternoon. MCG 320, Melbourne versus St Kilda. Oh, jeez. This feels like a slog in my brain. <laughs> Two yeah. very unwatchable teams. Right. Two teams that don't know how to kick it through the big sticks. 153 and a half. That's just the same as the Collingwood. Pretty three low one. Three over and under. I think. My big question for this, does this get 20,000 people in through the door? Yes, but only through MCC. Oh. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Ins and outs. In comes Ed Langdon, back fresh off a plane from London. Uh, yeah. Roo! Comes back as well. Adam Tomlinson, Tom Fullerton, and Lockie Hunter. That's actually a pretty solid bunch of ins for the uh, old Nam. Uh, yeah. Jake Lever, though, that's a big out. And Ben Brown, his hair's big, but it's not a big out. Uh, <laughs> you're a Roke 
for the Saints, Stocker. Ryan Burns. I don't mind that, didn't you? Jack Higgins from Higgins his suspension. Is Higgins is huge, in yeah. And Seb Ross. Mateus Philippou. What is going on? He was on one there? of their best players last year. He only had, what, two disposals yeah. and then he had a, a goal and behind late last week. It might week. be a confidence issue. Four is he, he has just, the ability. Is it just Ross Lyon hating dudes? And I think it might be. Mm. He's a second, he's second year Second player. year, like, yeah. We'll give him some time. But um, he looked so good last year. It's just weird. Mm. Tricky, second gross year game. Blues. Second year blues. Yeah. All right. Stats, stats, boy. Uh, D's won the last four meetings. Saints, decent record at the G, five and three the last four seasons. They did ask the AFL to uh, play more games at the G and probably the AFL gone, maybe get some bigger crowds and we we'll, might move you there. But maybe. maybe. <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing, Saints? Uh, Melbourne 11th in offense, but third in defense. So you got Lever out. Obviously, we talked about that during the week, yep. which could hurt their defense, but you still got May and Saints aren't really firing on offense. It's like none of their forwards are really... Higgins will be the decider if they can actually kick a decent score, I think. So, yeah. It's a really strange setup, this one, because I think the Demons losing last week, it felt like a, oh, we're going to win this game anyway. Game. Yeah, and they it was. Yeah. Completely underestimated West cocky. Coast and got mm. run over. By Harley Reid. You know, <laughs> <laughs> whoa, Harley Reid, bam, a lamb. We got a match on Harley Reid. Not of a Harley Reid. Reid. <laughs> and away we go. Look, could it happen two weeks in a row? Ooh, no. no, because Saints, Saints have been form. They're, Melbourne are licking their lips. They're like, yes, we get to play Saints this week because Saints have been so bad. Saints, Richmond, and North yeah. the last month are pretty close together, and you wouldn't have thought you'd put Saints in that category. So. Yeah, they just they don't play football you want to watch, do they? Like, no, they don't because they have Ross Liner's coach, the yeah. most annoying coach in the ever. 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 Meanwhile, ever. the Demons, six and four, had a rough couple of weeks, obviously, losing to Carlton, losing to West Coast. Uh, beat Geelong just before that. <laughs> like, well, I forget that game so, happened. That game, I don't think it actually happened. But <laughs> I was at the game and I for, like I don't think <laughs> it actually happened. <laughs> they I haven't have a lot to get through. It, to be they haven't scored more than eighty two point uh, eighty points. I think oh eighty five. There you go. In the last six weeks, right? Seventy eight. Yeah, that's a bit of a sixty. Eighty five. Seventy four. Seventy six. Seventy. I feel like there was something similar late last year where was, they couldn't we'll score. Was a about, massive swing, yeah. right? And Against the Saints, like, it's not going to get better. Saints have a decent I think defense. The Saints yeah. will just give them the old clamps and mm. just, like, this will just get gross, drag them into the dirt. I'm still going to say the Demons were 17. Yeah. Just because I think, I just don't trust the Saints to kick a winning score. Can't trust them. Can't trust, can't trust them. them. And then it's just steel <laughs> versus a lot of good midfielders in yeah. the uh, midfield. So between Melbourne. Truck and Co, they should be all right. So mm. Melbourne by around. Look, the the... They're 18 and a half point favorites. I think it lands right around there. So that's why I've gone 17. Stats, boy? Uh, I'll go Melbourne by 20. I think you, they can even allow Track to go forward. They've been struggling forward, and every time he goes forward, he kicks goals. Five goals against the Blues. Saints midfielder hasn't been that good other than Steele, and he's sometimes a little bit inconsistent as well. So I think Clary will dominate in there. Viney, yeah, Demons by 20. Yeah. I think D's by 27. But one thing we haven't talked about, Gorm versus Marshall. Ooh, oh, this is going to be an awesome is matchup. That'll be great. For a game that doesn't appear to be that good. My two All-Australian Ruckman at the moment. This is yeah. going to be a really good matchup. because he's, uh, he's such a VFL head. He doesn't like Brody Grundy. doesn't like anyone outside of Victoria. <laughs> oh, I love Brody Grundy. He's, classic. he's been a lot more inconsistent than Rowan Marshall. Uh, but oh, it is great. I don't like, know about that, actually. Rowan Marshall and so who did they play last week? They played. They a had team. a massive, massive, massive uh, oh, rock no, battle. I can't remember. Frio. Oh, it was Frio. Oh, Luke, Luke Jackson. Luke Jackson, Luke Jackson and, and Royal Marshall like, both had massive matchup. super The week scores, before so. that, it was a big matchup with um, Meek. Love it. Let's They're go. Like, every, every game. So like, Roma Marshall's yeah. just like dragging dudes to the contest time and time again. Yeah. Gornicus. Yeah. Let's it's going to be great, actually, I reckon. I'm Maximus like, Aurelius like, Gornicus. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can if you want. Forget I'm going to You're going to be more excited in Europe, I think. Nice one. All right, we're all going D's. Adelaide yep. West Coast. This is an interesting one as well. Of course, Isaac Rankin goes out. Well, let's look at the uh, ins and outs for this one. We have James Bolazzi. <laughs> Bolace. Chris Burgess. The real Italian for <laughs> Harry Schoenberg. Kieran Strawn. Strawny. 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 And Sam Can Berry. Can on the show? That would be, that would be good. <laughs> Isaac Rankin obviously goes out having pinged that hammy and Elliot Himmelberg goes too. In for World Jit Marara. Sorry, that should have been the Crows of the Kuana this week. Yep. Elliot, yo! <laughs> yo! Andrew Gaff, Clay Hall, and Harry Edwards. Clay Hall debut. I, I was going to say, I don't well, know. Extended, extended bench. Extended, extended bench. bench. Luke Edwards yep. has dropped. Um, incredible game last week from the Eagles, yep. aka the Harley Reed Eagles. Uh, <laughs> fascinating setup, though, because I feel like they have actually played okay at the Adelaide Oval, the Eagles, I think, in some of the, like, even though uh, they've been bad. For a big chunk of like the last few years, 
At Adelaide Oval, they've been vaguely competitive. So the over-under is 162.5, and the line is 27.5 points for Adelaide, Ooh. which you lose rank game, but you should still smash a team like the Eagles. But the question is, will they? West Coast, how many of their last 24 away games have they lost, Stats Boy? Uh, that's a very good question. It's 23. 23. 23. Yeah, I, was looking at, was I was looking at another stat for you, which you'll be interested in. The Eagles, I'm just checking when their last win was at the Adelaide Oval. Their last win was five years ago or four years ago. Yeah. So they're all so in So basically six. it goes against what you said. Oh, and six think, in their last I think six. a lot of those, those been games, been it was like definitely yeah. like ones where like- They've um, had a couple of close ones, yeah. Like Port, having had like Willie Rioli and stuff, like just suddenly West Coast like right there and you're like, oh, mm. this is interesting. Yep. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Like the big question for this one is, can Harley Reid stiff arm the entire prom? <laughs> Let's go. The entire yeah, you predicted it last week. I, I nailed it last week. This week it's going to be Jordan Dawson and Saligo and Tex Walker all at once. At once. <laughs> one arm. He's going to fend Boom. off with the Sharon. Three of the biggest, He strongest. could use Tex like Walker him. to fend off the other two. He's just going to pick him up and just go, <laughs> bang! How much would Tex Walker? Wait, I have nothing, kegs. Mate. Just like, yeah, just, <laughs> just out there, just like bicep curls of Tex Walker. It's going to be great. Popeye. Oh, Harley <laughs> Reid. Um, I think the Crom struggle with this Crom. one a little bit. Yep. 12 points. So Harley Reid will probably go off again. We get it. It's fine. <laughs> the question is, like, he's been awesome at home. He hasn't been that great on some of these road games. It's fine. He's really, really young. I think West Coast just have a little bit of a vibe. The fact that they play Adelaide this week where it's come out like, Elliot, yo, mm. is maybe looking at possibly a pretty big contract from the Crom. This is a fascinating setup. I love this. So I think the Eagles will play a little bit angry. I think they'll keep it tight. Adelaide still fall over the line by 12 points. What say you, Stats Boy? Uh, Adelaide by 25. I think they're going okay. They've lost a couple of close games. It's the same story as last year, which annoys me. They should have probably beaten Collingwood. They did really well against Port and a few other teams at home as well. They, they fire up, That usually, other than that game we saw them against Melbourne where they were horrible in uh, gather round. So at home, I think, yeah, 25 is pretty comfortable. Won't they're cover awesome the line. when they beat the Blues. When I beat the Blues as well. As well. Like, I forgot yeah. about that. Yeah. So, yeah, I think at home... West Coast are just horrible away. If this was at Optus, you could almost tip West Coast. They're so good at home. I'd tip them. But at, in Adelaide, they got no chance. I mean, the J train at home, like Dom Shee, Liam Ryan, yeah. Jack Darling. Like, they've got a lot up. of experienced mm. dudes still all of a sudden. If Yo's back and actually playing, Gas back and playing. Is Tom Brass, the- McGovern in the back yeah. line. Like, it's actually a pretty solid team. And I think yeah. this will be a really surprisingly tight game. Are they rebuilding? Who? You name all those old Adelaide. guys. No, oh. West Coast. Name all those old guys. Well, this is the entire thing. Because they've only got a couple of good young guys. They've got no one in the middle. That's a problem. They've got Mm -hmm. old dudes and young dudes and no one in the creamy middle. Yeah, but none of their young young dudes are like that good either. Oh, yeah. Harley Reid's not good. Oh, Harley Reid, baby. Harley Reid. That's boy said he's not any good. No, don't need him. Oh, Harley Reid. Baby, Oh, Harley Reid. Obviously, I know Harley Reid's good. Ruben Jimmy's not good. He's not that good. Mate. He's just big, mate. Oh, you don't know balls. Oh, right. you, Oscar Allen ball is a weapon and he is a gun. It just, but oh, he's not, I, I can't wait miss to get him. back. I miss him so yeah. much. I feel like the J train, <laughs> I miss you so much, Oscar Allen. I need Oscar Allen back in my life. Would you trade please, Oscar Allen for please. Charlie Kerner? No, I wouldn't. <laughs> well, no, he would trade Harry Mackay and Charlie Kerner for Oscar Allen. Yeah, I'll both. Go, yeah. both. Uh, maybe for the J train, let's talk. <laughs> <laughs> I love Jake Waterman. Uh, who are you taking in this one, Leo? Crom by 11. I just think with ranking um, out, there's sort of a, a missing hole in that midfield. They're, they're yep. a bit all of the same. Rashali might need a lift in there. So, yeah, I just think West Coast can keep it close. Nice. Cool. Very cool. All right. Let's do the big calls for round 11. Good. 11, 11, 11, 11. <laughs> if Melbourne and St Kilda can't get more than 20,000 to that game, they should have to merge. <laughs> <laughs> the Melbourne Saints or the St. Kilda D's? Ooh. They're going to be the Melbourne Saints. Or why don't we just do the, the mascots together? Well, I think the St. Demons is pretty funny. Yeah, that's right? funny because like, it, it goes against each other. We're running on a ju- juxtaposition at this point. Yeah. I'm all about it. Like, <laughs> I, It is so frustrating to look. Demons fans, Saints fans, is like, oh, we love our team. It's like, but there's eight of you. Yeah. <laughs> It's a worry. <laughs> so, a, oh, well, all the Demons fans go away to the snow. It's like, it's May. They're not taking their Range Rovers and their Grange to the snow just yet. Rock up to the bloody footy. What are you doing? Like, this is a game that Melbourne should smash the Saints. They yeah, should. They should. They likely won't because the Saints will just give them the old clamps. And Saints fans, like, sometimes they will rock up to the G in pretty big numbers and it's, like, awesome. Like, very fun times. At the same time, this is the sort of game that you want to rock up to and like, because you've got a bit of a shot. If you can't get more than 25,000, I did start at 20, I'll go to 25. <laughs> 25, you should have to merge. 
Yeah. Melbourne Saints. So How many it. Saints players actually get into the merged team though? That's a really good question. Like six in the 22? <laughs> Wait, I reckon no, six uh, in the whole like list. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's tough. Steel, obviously. Roll Marshall. Imagine, oh, actually, I was so, going to yeah, say, it's, it is literally a Fitzroy Brisbane situation. It's like, <laughs> yeah. oh, we don't want no, any young players. Any, it's like, <laughs> like Gary They Pert, may as well just uh, trade St. Kilda's best players to Melbourne. It's like Alistair Lynch. Get rid of the we'll Saints. take him. <laughs> anyway, uh, other one, North Pop the Power. Also, no. <laughs> someone will definitely ask if Richmond deserves dream time. Surely not. If they get smashed by 100 plus. It's a great tradition, that game. If they get not. smashed by 100 plus, someone next week will go, are we sure that Richmond it's deserves dream time? It's probably going to be Alex. Time? It might be. Nah, he's, he <laughs> likes tradition. I'll back him. Right. Leo, you have one written down. <laughs> Leo, I like Leo. Leo, <laughs> go. Hawks beat Lions. Oh yeah, yeah. please <laughs> brackets. Please, <laughs> please beat the Lions after last week. I want a win. Yeah, that's it, really. They want you to send you off to a month worth of STDs and booze uh, <laughs> with a win. I like that. Stats Make boy. something happy. Uh, I'm going Tomahawk bounce back game. Obviously, he's been They've horrible. Been injured. Yeah, but he's just been horrible. He had, what did he have, four weeks in a row where he couldn't kick a goal? Yep. I remember they kicked five in a final against GWS once. He averages over two and a half goals against them. I just think he's going to fire at some point. I know he's getting a bit older and he's not going to be as consistent. I feel like at home, fire up the crowd, uh, he'll get, I'm going to say five plus. Why not? Five plus. Why not? Why not? Jezza, Jezza will go more up the ground, I reckon. And then Tomahawk will just sit back and bury the square. Who does Sam Taylor go to then? Probably Tomahawk, yeah, I would have thought. Probably. I feel like Taylor goes to Tomahawk. So I don't think he's going to get five this. That's cool. No, well, that's a big call. Maybe You're Jessica wrong. Cameron. <laughs> Jessica Cameron, six plus. <laughs> <It's all laughs> Let's go, Jim. So, yeah. uh, Messi, seven plus. <laughs> Harry McFive out at Marvel actually is not a bad idea. Keep an eye on for this weekend. Yes. Cats versus GWS. Both teams need to win. They do. They really do. Both reaffirm, lost their last three, yeah. yeah. To reaffirm their contender st- status, which yeah. I really do appreciate because GWS, I love them early on, but they didn't beat anybody. They got smashed by Carlton. Well, they got out muscled by Carlton in the second like half. It was of that a game. convincing. Literally, at that point, yeah, that was like where it all just sort of fell off a cliff. Toby Green's done absolutely nothing. Like this is a perfect Toby. Didn't Green. he kick four last week? Well, it feels like he's been for his season though. His high standards. He's was been it off. three? I don't think yeah. it was four. They only nah. kicked like five goals. I swear, last it was week. only him and Hogan that kicked the goals. Maybe. Maybe. Let's have a look. Uh, but down there at the Cattery, it's going to be a fascinating three last matchup. Week, yeah. I like three, that. The other one. Keep an eye. Can the Suns win away from the? I don't know. Being the NT Suns. Can they? No. Will they? No. no. Uh, keep an eye on Tassie. Just Tassie. <laughs> just, just Tassie. Why? Why? Because <laughs> weird stuff that happens in Tassie. <laughs> Got to keep an eye on you. Weird stuff that you don't want to keep an eye on. Well, look, if you keep an eye on it, maybe weird stuff won't happen. Like, But if, <laughs> if you it, don't. It'll, it'll always happen. <laughs> it's Tassie. Uh, and obviously, as I said, keep an eye on the crowd at Demon Saints because this will be an interesting one where you like, we understand that. 18 teams at the moment. We're about to expand to 19. The idea is to move to 20. They're not going to get rid of teams. And if we're going to have like Nervous demon North saints that get like no one, you're like, dude, what are we doing here? Mm. Realistically, what do you think the crowd will be? I think 28,000. No, nah, demon's home game in the G. I reckon 28, 28, 30, 30, 35, 35, 40. Yeah. 40, I reckon. Yeah. Still pretty gross. You know, These dogs got like just over 40. These fans one. don't turn up. Yeah. yeah, It's weird. Anyway, anything else you guys want to keep an eye on? Uh, Nothing from me. No, no I just really want North to win a game. Sure. Well, mm. I'm I'm here trying to back you up here, like, stats boy. No, no, no. Listen, no. Jim, never. We're never not going to win. Oh, I want us to win so bad. Ne- <laughs> us tipping north isn't going to help them. Yes, it is. What? This is a bit of belief in the boys. <laughs> it's all about. It's, it's vibes. Vibes, yeah, true. It's all vibes. It's my oh, entire. vibes. And this year they've crushed me. Man. My entire thing is You were vibes. vibes last year. I actually was, weirdly enough. No, it's the first year I've been really sad. Anyway. Black ball. <laughs> uh, right. Super coach, vibes, tips, thoughts, vice captains, captains. I need to do my team. Jeez. It's in three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Joel Frazier has actually been named. Um, obviously, he's got the big old green tick. He's one of the two biggest sins for the week. The yep. other one is Joe Richards um, for the pies. Out goes Darcy Jones for the most part because he's injured. Uh, I chose out Cadman and Rankine to Zorko and Richards. Pretty straightforward. Pretty good, one. yeah. Um, yeah, I still need a bit of a – one more back – Line upgrade and a couple more on the forward line because it's a horror show, right? Uh, but the VC and v- Captain vibes this week. Caleb Sarong, Sarong. Uh, that's the one for me. He's playing against the Pies. We know that their midfielders also, you know, giving up pretty hefty scores to midfielders yep. here and there. Uh, and Sarong just loves playing at home. He's ripped off 170, 150, 125, Love 140, yeah, and I think a 117 at home this year. So I'm going to throw the VC on him on Friday night and probably roll that into either Nick Martin. 
Dreamtime. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Do you have Zach Merritt? I don't pick. have Zach Merritt. I don't have Zerrett either, so I, I feel like he'd Zerid. be a good option. Yeah, yeah. I'd rather go Zerrett over Martin, but that's where we are. Uh, the other ones are obviously Jordan Sweet being back is very big, so that you can good. always keep an eye on that. And the other ones are, I think there was very, very little in the way of rookies. And like, Sean Darcy's back, which will impact Jackson. Luke Jackson mm. probably goes forward a little bit. In terms of like betting stuff, it's probably better for him to kick a goal or so, which yep. I think we threw out in the tab super coach pick for today, where it's like, Luke Jackson rest forward playing a, bit, a little yeah. bit more forward. Yep. Probably a little bit better of a look at a anytime goal yeah, there, definitely. if not two. I think he's when he, he's kicked eight goals this year and he's kicked two in mm. four games. So when he's kicked, mm. he's gone forward, he's kicked at least two goals. Pretty weird. So he's going to be interesting when he goes forward, especially in the super coach. Any other vibes on your VCs? I'm going Bont VC and Dacos okay. captain, mainly because I do not have Sarong. Oh. Oh. That's a bit unlucky. That's sad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I got, I'm going Sarong vice captain as well. I, I was tempted with Heaney, but I don't know. This could, this could be a really close game, so I don't think he's going to get that massive score. Whereas Sarong, just he he got 150 against Sydney when they got smashed by Sydney. So I think he's more reliable. Mm. I like that one. Uh, there you go. Was there anything else you wanted to hit on there? I think. How far away from upgrading your teams fully, gentlemen? I think I I'm am a while away. One. Defender slash mid because I got Martin who can move anywhere, nice. and then I think I'm two or three forwards. It's about the same. I'm it? the same. Yeah, one, one. It depends much. whether you count Powell and Reed as like end product forwards. Reed's no. not, but <laughs> yeah. could, they could like that. Oh, Holly Reed, he's a product of the forward. Oh, Holly Reed, product of the forward. <laughs> Love this, Cram. Get at me. We'll talk. Uh, what is he? I think he, I feel like he's a Saints fan, Cram. Anyway, I, don't know. I haven't met him. <laughs> Don't even know who you're talking <laughs> about. You're best mates. <laughs> anyway, any other super coach tips, vibes, thoughts, nah. things? I'm going Freya as my rookie option or yep. Fraser, however you pronounce Frasier. it. I just brought him in just then. I only did it because <laughs> to get if I was to go Richards, I can't get Whitfield, and that was the primo that I could afford. That's the, yeah, it's a, the Whitfield one back in the back line is interesting, right? Mm. Because he's so cheap at the moment, but at the same time, He's cheap for a reason. He's had a rough. Well, he only had weeks, one so. bad game. Mm. He did get tagged against Essendon, but he scored a hundred still. Yeah. So, so it's interesting. It's a good one. Yeah. I actually thought about him last week, but I managed to swing that Martin trade. So happy days. All right, but there you go. That's the AFL Today Show for this week. For today, we'll be back on Sunday with the AFL Today Show. Uh, that's right. It'll be the Sunday night rap show. That'll be a weird one because I've got to run off and go to a gig. So we better sort that one out early. I reckon. Uh, <laughs> either way, thank you to the stats boy. Thank you very much. And thank you to the. St- Social guy. <laughs> Thanks, Leo. Jim. He's about to like just jet off to like Europe in about 25 Jealous. minutes. Jealous, so yeah. <laughs> pretty good. Yeah, you're taking me to the airport, right? Uh, definitely, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm just going to walk out that door and you'll never see me again. Uh, remember to smash a like across all the socials. That's all the stuff that he does, as well as our uh, good mate Spence. Um, <laughs> but you can see us doing stuff and filling in all your footy gaps throughout this year, of course. On Facey, IG, X, Threads, TikTok, and of course, YouTube, all the good stuff. You can check out all of our shows. In fact, the Cricket Today podcast, the Football Today podcast, a very, very excellent NBA show. It's called NBA Australia. It's hosted by your mate Jim. Just me yelling a lot. And hold all tickets if you like your yelling, but you like it about GGs. There you go. Uh, subscribe, star, and like all of our shows, of course, across all your podcast apps. Uh, get around them like Dipper. Getting around mangling the pronunciation <laughs> of every single word. It used to always, yes. Yeah, I love stuff that. Stuff a few words. Stats is guys! <laughs> it's like, that's not how you say it. I love Dipper. you, I love you Dipper. Uh, all throughout his life. There's, look, if there was any other person I'd love on this show, it'd probably be Dipper. We well, could get him. Let's do it. Let's get him. Teed up. All right, that's it. We'll catch you later this week, Sunday night, for the wrap show of the AFL Today Show. Until then, look after yourselves. Have a great weekend of footy, because remember, footy's back. If you like this show, make sure you check out all the other shows in the Sports Today Network, from the AFL Today Show to the Cricket Today Podcast, the Football Today Podcast, as well as NBA Australia and NFL Australia. With Sports Today, your sporting needs have never been easier to cover.